What's cracking everybody? It's Michael Alder here from CarpetExpertBlueprint.com and in this video I want to share with you how to start or expand your small YouTube channel so you can make it a profitable business or a simple side income stream that you can use to fulfill some of your dreams here. Now, I'm going to take you on the journey of how I started Carpet Expert Blueprint, some of the mistakes I made along the way so you can avoid those and skip right to the fast track to make your channel profitable. Now, be sure to stick around to the very end because I'll give you a quick list of bullet points you can go ahead and use to scale things in your business and I'm going to try and keep it short because I hate doing long form content. Anything over five minutes makes me crazy. So let's see what we can go ahead and knock out here. December 2017, I was involved in a bunch of different businesses. I said I have to dominate one social platform. So what better platform to pick than the most difficult to get growth and results from on a fast basis and that is YouTube. Now I will say this, I have made a lot of money with YouTube in the past, but I've never been consistent. So my goal was to get really good at YouTube, figure out what works on there, what doesn't work, what gets people to tick, what gets people to stick around your videos and buy your stuff in the end. So I decided I'm going all in on one topic. I'm going to create a niche channel and my intent was to make several income streams from this. I did not get that result. We will get to that in a little bit, but I said, what can I create a video on every single day for the next two years and just watch the path of growth and see what works and what doesn't work on this. I own a carpet and flooring company. I said I could absolutely hit the record button every single day, record the journey, record tips and tricks from everything from how to get the flooring down, how to get it installed and business tips to make more money. So it seems like a good idea, right? I know this in and out. I could create content every day. My next step was to find a branded flooring channel on YouTube. Now, I went on there, I searched out how to install carpet, how to install tile, da, 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 da. Loads of videos up there, but I was looking for a branded channel. I wanted something specific to the niche to validate the fact that I was on the right track. And there was only one channel out there at this time. I'm sure there was other ones, but I only found one that was fully branded, was doing only flooring content, and it was just to that specific niche, and that was Floors by Southern Boys. So I reviewed the channel real quick on the front end at that time. He had about a thousand subscribers, maybe a hundred videos. So I was like, in my head, I thought this was a good idea. I want to back up a little bit. If there's only one channel doing it and you may think that, hey, this is a good idea, I could dominate the market, that might actually mean there's not a big enough market for it. Now, we've kind of debunked that. There's a plenty of viewership on the flooring channels, but if you're looking to go big, big, it might be too small of a niche if you only see one or two channels branding on it. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about starting a channel. So anyway, I see there's one branded channel out there getting some good views, maybe 100 videos, 1,000-ish thousand, thousand subscribers or whatever the case. I say, okay, I could do this as well. Next, I had to get my ed education expanded a little bit if I was going to dominate this marketplace. So I went on YouTube, how to make money on YouTube, and I started searching out the quote-unquote gurus. I was looking for somebody that had branding, entertainment, and education all in place so I knew they, that they knew what they were doing if I was going to invest in them. I came across Deadbeat Dan from Deadbeat Super Affiliate. Here's a guy that wears goofy looking pajamas all day long, talks about how he lays around, sleeps almost full day length at a time and makes all this money passively just making YouTube videos. The branding was on point. He was entertaining. So based on that, I invested in his course right there because I knew he knew what he was doing and I could at least pull some nuggets from him. I bought Tube Tycoon. It was a $500 investment and I started putting it to work. Started making videos every single day. Here's how I got my content play. I focused on how to because I was very much wanting organic search hitting the channel. So how to install carpet, how to install thresholds, how to da da da. Where did I get all this how to content? It was from two places. One was Google keywords, which you could get within your AdSense analytics or AdWords analytics actually. Go in there, you could search around and you'll pull up all the keywords that people search for each and every month. The other source, which is a phenomenal resource, is answerthepublic.com. If you go on there, you can put any keyword you want in there. It'll populate every single question that the public is answering under the sun. You just create a video answering those questions. So for roughly 90 days, I was uploading a video a day, getting anywhere from 20 to 50 views, you know, at best. This was very low count stuff in the beginning, which can be discouraging, but stick with me here. I'm going to break down how to get past that barrier. So after 90 days, I was wondering if I was on the right track, if I was missing any secrets. So I went back to the drawing board while still creating content every day and looked for more people online that were teaching this YouTube stuff. 
that's where I came across Sean Cannell. If you're not familiar with Sean, he's got Think Media. Uh, he does collaborations with a guy named Benji. They have a couple channels, and he seemed to know his stuff. He had a course as well, another $500 there. I went ahead and invested in that. Really didn't pull out anything extra from that that I didn't know, but it was reassuring knowing that I was on the right journey. It was just a time play that was against me, and that's probably one of the biggest obstacles because nobody wants to wait time. We all want to explode and make money immediately. Tough break. It's most likely not going to happen right away on YouTube, but it's still the main channel you should focus on. Stay with me here. So I continue making content, going from answer the public to my Google keyword search and just how to, how to, and occasionally a video would blow. It would get 10,000, 15,000 views while others were only getting uh, 20 to 50. And I still couldn't quite figure out why some would blow and some would die instantly, but I continued making content. Then Sean Cannell put on an event in Las Vegas. It was uh, to fly my family out there the whole day. I probably dropped six grand for all of us to go out to Vegas. For me, it's all about ne networking with key players. So there was like Shalene Johnson was in the room, Sean Cannell. There's a bunch of big marketers in there. That's who I was looking to connect with. What are you guys doing for paid ads? What works? What doesn't work? And mind you, up to this point, I have not spent much, if any money, on paid ads. I was trying to do this big organic play. Huge mistake. Never be afraid to invest money behind your business there. Anyway, connected with some people there. I got to talk to Shalene Johnson. A lot of people within the crowd were heavy YouTubers. So they were able to point me in the right direction. A lot of people in the DIY space, which was cool. Nobody in the foreign uh, space, but, you know, countertops and things like that. So the networking play was spot on, well worth the investment. Here's where the real investment came in. This is why I'd spend thousands of dollars just to have someone break down my channel. VidIQ was there and they have a software that you could go ahead and download, download to your YouTube channel, which basically tells you what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, what to do more of, things like that. And they, were go they would walk through your channel with you and tell you what's right and wrong with your channel. So I stood in line for like 30 minutes to get this guy to review my channel. It was the end of the day. I could tell he was tired, exhausted. I was like the last dude to actually there was one girl behind me. So I was basically the last person, right? He looks at my channel and he's like, so how do you want me to deliver this? I'm like, bro, you can't hurt my feelings. My whole thing is to get results, so come brutal. Basically, he told me I was on the right track. He gave me a couple suggestions to tweak a few things, but he said everything's on point. He's like, you're so super niche though, that's why this thing isn't exploding yet, but just stay the course, it will hit. This was in September 2018. I stayed the course, kept uploading videos, and January 2019, I hit 1,000 subscribers. I was able to monetize the channel. I want to back up a little bit though. My main goal, one of my main goals with this channel was not only to monetize through AdSense because that's kind of a smaller play. I actually wanted to do more of a consulting slash website builder, you know, generating traffic for other installers out there. What you'll learn in the flooring industry is even though some guys make a killing, they don't know anything about the tech side, nor do they understand the uh, aspect of how much you should be investing into that. So they just go off of their regular leads in their backyard and hope that everything works out. They're not ready to invest. So for me, that was a bad play because I didn't get the business I was looking to generate from the channel, but I did monetize it through AdSense, which is cool and generates passive income from previous videos I did. Anytime you can make money while you sleep, it's a win. And I actually take my AdSense revenue and just invest it into other businesses. I have marketing costs, things like that. So it helps in that aspect. So it took me a whole year to actually monetize this channel. Now that seems like a lot of work and a lot of people would throw in the towel at that point, but stay the course because things do explode faster with momentum. Once you get picked up in the search engines and things like that, your channel will explode. You'll make more money. You'll get in front of more people and more opportunity will come your way. So from January to now we're in September here, I've picked up another roughly 1,300 uh, subscribers. So we're about 2,300 subscribers right now. It's kind of funny that it takes you a whole year to hit 1,000 and then a few, you know, six months after you hit your second 1,000. Those things really do compound and start to go your way. Now, a few things I wanna share with you that you could be doing to make your channel scale faster, get more attention, get more money out of it, if that's your goal, or if you're just a branding play to offset your existing business, how to get more eyeballs on you and build confidence so people will do business with you in your local marketplace. So, a couple things. Pick a topic that you can do a video a day for at least 90 days to test exactly what's working. Spend money on ads. And when I say spend money on ads, retargeting is the mother of all ad spend right there. That's where you want to be. Now, for those of you that don't know retargeting, what it is, is you're on your computer and you search something. And then next thing you know, whatever you searched, everywhere you go, that ad is chasing you everywhere. 
and you're like, what the heck? My computer's listening in on me. My phone's listening to me. Stuff is chasing me. It's retargeting. You pinged an ad at some point or you watched something. That person says, when this dude clicks this, I want you to chase him or her with this forever until my money runs out. That's retargeting. And that's what I did with my channel to get more growth out of it. So for those of you that may have seen this channel before, I had a video. Actually, Chase Nasty caught this video, which was hilarious. And I bought it off of him. Someone was driving like a budget uh, truck or a U-Haul type truck with the ladder hanging off the back and just dragging it down the freeway. Chase Nasty was on the freeway. So he caught the video. I gave him $20 for the video. I used it as a video intro into a boat renovation. The boat renovation was a highly searched keyword, but I opened up with the entertainment piece. That is another key thing. No matter what niche you're in, entertain first, then get down to your education play. Because if you can't entertain them on the front end, they're clicking off right away. Nobody wants to hear you babble for 10, 20, 30 minutes. Give me the answer I'm looking for. But if you can make me laugh on the front end, that's a perk. I may even stick around a little bit longer after that. So that video got some views on it. I'm not going to say it blew because it didn't, but it got some views on it. Now, with those views, I was able to say, everybody that watched this video, I want you to retarget them and everybody that watched my videos in the past 30 days. So I was able to take basically a list of, let's say 50,000 views over roughly 30 days and say, chase all these people around with this boat video here. I want them to be aware of me. And not only that, anybody that is similar to these people, let's go ahead and chase them too. So, and you could start off small. Let's say you don't have a lot of money. You could spend $5 a day with a retargeting ad that not only chases people that already watch you, but a similar audience to these people. So you could expand your footprint and get more subscribers, more people watching your channel. Well worth the investment. Anybody wants to go into business and doesn't want to spend money, you're viewing the whole thing wrong. Money's a tool. You need to leverage it. Put it to work so it could work for you and your profits will get bigger. So retargeting is a key, key play here. I got some of my bullet points here. Let me review to make sure I'm not missing anything for you here. Um, so content ideas, like I just said in the last piece there, go into anything you could do videos for for 90 days. Make sure you could entertain someone, even if it's just five, 10 seconds, just give them something and be like, ha, huh, and then boom, into your education play because they're lightweight hooked. They'll watch a little bit longer. And if they like your style, they'll stick around. Now, I've noticed tons of people don't want to start on YouTube because the floodgates of haters. F haters love you, straight up. And everybody says that, and you're like, wow, when everybody tells me I suck, how could they love me? Believe me, anybody that takes time out of their day to go from video to video to video telling you you suck, they love you, and they just want a hug from you. So go ahead and give them that hug. Let them know you think they're awesome, and they will actually become a fanboy after that. So don't worry about haters. Embrace the hate. My mentor actually told me it's better to be hated than to be ignored, and he's a 1,000% correct. Haters will ultimately convert over to being your fans. They'll support you along the way. They'll be your friends and all that. Obviously, they're feeling some sort of way in the beginning, but they grow to love you. So don't let a hater hold you back. Um, another key point, handling burnout with a YouTube channel. Burnout's going to happen. And it's kind of funny because all you have to do is hit record. I do everything from my iPhone. So all I have to do is hit record and start running my mouth. But at times you're like, bro, I'm not trying to talk right now. And you hit this burnout point where you stop doing videos and that's bad. I think I've had two cycles over the past roughly two years where I'm like, I'm not doing anything. And it's been upwards of 30 days. And I think Christian Wilson actually called me out. He's like, dude, where you at? And then I was like, yeah, I need to get back on point. You know, I'm being lazy. So burnout happens. It's natural get back in it and start recording more videos. Just make sure whatever your niche is, it's something that's easy for you to record and talk about each and every single day. Um, stay focused. Here's a key, key thing. And you're going to be like, dude, why are you bringing up Master P? Master P is the king of marketing. So stick with me here. No limit records. I hope nobody from the No Limit Army is watching this right now because I don't want to get killed. But let's think back to all those No Limit albums that dropped when we were kids. At best, average rap skills, right? There was no M&Ms, Dr. Dre's, none of that under Master P's crew. Master P is a beast marketer though and convinced us all that No Limit was the best thing in the world and they blew up and he was probably the biggest businessman in the rap industry of his time and everybody followed his lead for that. So why is this relevant to us? Well, if you read his story, he consistently got booed off stage, constantly. Nobody would show up for their shows and when they did show up, they would boom off stage and he tells a story about how one dude was probably completely drunk, but he just rocked out to him the whole time he was on stage. He's like, that's who we're doing this for, that one person. And in the beginning, you're gonna have a flood of haters, but one person's gonna be like, I think you're dope, do another video. In the beginning, I had a couple individuals and it was like, there'd be 10 haters, one person be like, yeah, it was cool, do it again. So rock for that one or two people that think you're cool in the beginning or telling you keep it going, that's what you're there for. 
serve them up and then go ahead and create more content that entertains them. It will expand and your portfolio will get better. You will have more views, more followers and profit bigger on the back end. That's the ultimate goal. So that's basically it in a nutshell, but I wanna give you some key points. Better have your pen and pad out right now. If you've watched 15 minutes of me run my mouth, you better take some notes and get down to action here. So quick start. If you are thinking about starting a YouTube channel or if you have a tiny channel and you need to expand and get bigger, here's what I want you to do. Pick a niche, actually pick two or three niches, but we're really going to focus on one when it's showtime. Anything that you know, you could do a video a day for the next year. You're going to be able to hit record, run your mouth, and it has to be how to content. You want to be after what people are searching. People go online, how to dot, dot, dot. What, it doesn't matter what it is. People are searching for everything. Next, validate your idea. Go on YouTube and look for branded channels on your idea. If there's 10, 20, 30 people doing it, that's not something to be scared of. That actually means there's a load of content out there and people are searching for that content. You need to fill that need. If there's only one person, I'm not saying don't do it, but it may be a rough road because there might not be enough interest in that. Next, after you see if your idea is good on YouTube, there's a bunch of people with branded channels doing it, go to Google Keyword Planner and go to Answer the Public. Find out how many questions people are answering on, or asking on your topic so you could create enough videos answering their questions. And then within Google Keywords, it'll tell you how many people are searching each month. This is something that you would think is bad advice, but it's actually the best advice. Within Google Keywords, they'll say, well, this search term, only 100 people are looking for each month. This search term, 10,000 people are searching for. So in your head, you're gonna think, I'm gonna go for these big keywords. Most of the bigger players, if there's channels out there, they've already dominated those keywords and it's gonna be a long road for you to catch up to them. Focus on the small keywords. Everybody that's doing 100, 200, 500 searches a month, that's your world. Build your whole portfolio around that in the beginning and it's gonna be a little bit rough because you are gonna get a low view count in most cases in the beginning, but that will grow and as your channel grows, then you go after those 10,000 search term keywords and then you dominate what everybody else is out there doing already. You say, I just came out of nowhere and knocked you all off your pedestals. So that's how you wanna do it. Start small, kind of build that buzz around you and then boom, blow it up. Um, when you have a video that hits, invest money. I can't stand when people are cheap and they wanna make money but they don't wanna invest money into their business. Absolutely create retargeting ads, build your audience, get more eyeballs on your stuff so you could expand and profit. And then finally, don't be afraid to test weird stuff. Put different products out there, different ideas out there, shoot different videos. The market will tell you if your stuff's hot or if it sucks. And here's the thing, if everybody's telling you it sucks, but you have 50,000 views, it doesn't suck. Do more of that. Now, if nobody tells you you suck, nobody tells you it's good and there's five views, you might want to go ahead and dump that idea. Not the whole niche, but just that how to whatever video you did, focus on the stuff that's getting more views. Now in the beginning, a lot of your stuff is probably only gonna get five views. Don't let that get you down, it will grow with time. So that's everything in a nutshell. I hope that was helpful. That was my journey for this channel. I will absolutely talk about other money-making ideas that I've done on different channels on YouTube, but this was my breakdown of how we did Carpet Expert Blueprint, how we ended up turning it into a cash flow machine on a smaller scale, how we took some losses. Like I said, I wanted to do more web design and marketing for installers, but the market doesn't seem to be quite there yet, but we were able to make an AdSense uh, channel out of it. So it's still a win at the end of the day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Comment below with any questions and I'll see you on the next video.